Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. The Knife Raven here, back again with another video. And in today's video, I will be taking a look at some very strange knives. And I say strange, not in a bad way. These knives are from Curel, the same Portuguese brand I reviewed a knife from a couple weeks ago. And this is very different. That was a kind of simple workhorse of a knife that isn't very appealing to a collector, but would definitely make for a wonderful user. This, however, is vastly different. I say that because this knife is not really a using knife. It's more for a collector. And without further ado, let's have a look at it. So it comes in this very basic box with some marking. I got this from fendryhan.ca. And they have a American site, too, for all my U.S. viewers. But here is the Curel Estiletto. Now, based on that name, you can probably already understand why I bought this. I really like stilettos, but the way that, unfortunately, the knife industry is going, manual stilettos, so the non-switchblade versions, are quite hard to come by in Canada or anywhere for that matter. And because I can't get switchblades in Canada, because they are illegal, I decided to start broadening my horizons and looking for stiletto-style knives from other countries. At which point, I found a video from uh, Advanced Knife Bro. You probably recognize him for his incredibly entertaining, almost slightly parody-esque videos, but are still very well made, far better than anything I could do. Uh, I highly recommend you go check him out. He did a review on this this knife in a larger size. It's the only one on YouTube I can find. But this is a Portuguese-made knife from Curel, which is most known for their kitchen and utility knives, but they do make a few folders. And this is the medium size with the olive wood handle. And as you can immediately tell, this is not this is not a very practical looking knife. Now, as strange as this is, I actually bought two. Why? Well, there were different handle materials, and there were a bunch of sizes, and I couldn't help but be curious, so I went and got two. And this one is, instead of olive wood, this is the red stamina wood. Stamina wood, for those who don't know, is essentially a diamond wood or a resin wood maybe also known as Paca wood, um, and it is a resin-stabilized wood, in this case with a red color, and it looks fairly nice, but I figured I'd give both of these a try. This is the extra small size, this is the medium. Uh, you can get extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And yeah, with, without any more talking, without actually showing you the knives, I will show you the knives. So starting with the medium one, you can see this is a very, very slender knife, which is part of the reason I was interested in it. The blade is a little warped, as you can probably clearly see in the open position. It is fairly straight when you look at it, so that's, that's all right. Uh, blade play, there's a tiny bit. However, thin, long blades, you will notice it more. But yeah, there's a bit of blade play there. The spring is one of the weakest I've seen. So weak, in fact, that I can do this without even having to push on the knife. I can close it. However, I can't open it. So you can't one-hand open this. I know uh, the Canadian knife laws are strange, and if you can find a way to flick a knife open, it technically is considered a gravity knife. Well, you can't do it with this. Thankfully, because, you know, it would not only make the knife technically illegal, but also unsafe in the pocket if it could just open whenever it pleases. So you can open it one-handed like that. You do have to open it manually, but you can get it to close with ease. I'd say on my personal index of spring strength, this would mark an easy three. Very weak, certainly strong enough to keep the blade sort of in position, but any pressure at all will cause it to close. So, not great there. Again, stainless steel spring, brass liners and bolsters. You know I like brass. 
This is heavily inspired by three knives I have seen, at least, that are from other parts of the world. The Laguiole from France with this curved handle and the extra engravings on the, oh, pardon me, on the bolsters, very reminiscent of a traditional French Laguiole knife. Another bit of influence that I see in this is the Navaja from Spain. And Navajas are, it's a very broad term, you see. They can take any form from, say, a clip point with a curved handle or a stiletto style. Really, Navaja is the same thing as saying a Toshin Messer or a pocket knife. It's a broad term to describe a folding knife that you can carry in your pocket. And while that is a term that is very broadly used, the Navaja is traditionally a more slender handle with either a spear point or clip blade. But you can certainly see the, perhaps the Spanish influence here. But most of all, that very, very pointy slender blade is extremely reminiscent of the Italian stiletto. And I don't have a stiletto on hand at the moment, but I do have a knife that has some similarities to this. And this is an American style of knife. And it's much closer in size to this. But that would be the Case Tiny Texas Toothpick. And you can see both have a curved handle with the double bolsters. However, the blade shape is significantly different. You've got a spear point on this one and a clip point on the case. Both are equally pocket friendly. They are extremely small. The overall length is not too far apart, but the Estiletto is a little bit bigger. And the case uh, Tiny Texas Toothpick is a pattern that many people consider useless because of how small and skinny the blade is, but I've actually used it a fair bit. It makes for an okay letter opener, although it's a bit short for that. And if you have any small pieces of tape or string, it, it works just as well as a larger knife. Certainly not a hard use knife, but it's fairly decent. So what are these knives used for? Well, that's a good question. Immediately, letter opener is the first thing that should come to mind. And aside from that, I thought perhaps a hole puncher. I know that some people don't have the ability to get an awl or a reamer, and say you need to punch a hole in your belt, this, this could work, although it might be a little more awkward than just using a tool intended for that use. Uh, if you ever have to punch a hole in anything, this is fairly decent. It would also make a good fruit knife. So, for example, the sterling silver fruit knives of old, uh, this would be a good substitute for that. Uh, it's almost reminiscent of a doctor's knife. So, the, again, that skinny spear point-esque blade. However, it is far pointier than most spear points. I'd easily say that that tip is sharp as a needle. You got a French nail nick on this model with the admittedly a bit intrusive Curel logo. It is a hollow grind, almost bordering on a Scandi grind. Bit of a semi-mirror polish with a bit of a satin look if you examine it from a different angle. The bolsters are also kind of a mirror slash satin finish with the brass pins. The olive wood has a fairly nice grain pattern. You can see that this piece is far lighter than this one, but they're very smooth, very well done. Perfect transitions. You can't feel the pins or the bolsters absolutely at all. They're incredibly well done. Again, spring, not the greatest. Blade play, not the greatest. Centering when closed is a little bit off, but... And this is one of those knives you have to walk down because it will develop blade wrap. There's no real thing to stop it. There is a kind of oddly placed stop pin in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it doesn't really do much of anything. I've already had to... Um, Examine this knife a few times, and I think there is the beginning of blade wrap, so be very careful if you're closing this knife. 
as there is a chance that you will uh, get a chip in the edge. Take a look at the second one. Same thing. Pins are perfect. Transitions are perfect. Even grind. Blade play is non-existent on this one, although there is a little bit of up and down. Gaps are not to be found, except for this little bit here. No stop pin on this one, so again, you have to walk it down. Blade centering is... pretty sure this one's perfect. Yeah, that one's perfect. When open, the blade is fairly straight. A little bit off to the right, but not bad. And there is a full mirror polish on this one. Same grind and no nail nick with the Curel logo. Same engravings on the bolsters. And the red stamina wood is very, very nice, very smooth as well. The tip is extremely sharp on this one as well. And the edge is not dull, but certainly not razor sharp. You have to keep in mind there's not much strength behind these edges as there is very little um, belly or overall mass of the blade. So these, these are not the strongest knives by any means. However, the spring tension on this one, startlingly, is a lot better than this one. And it's very comparable, again, to the case. The case, I would say, is about a 4, maybe a 5. This, I'd probably say, is also a 4. So, a bit better than this one. This is really, really weak. But it, it's certainly no Sheffield knife, I'll tell you that. Not even comparable to the likes of, say, an Arthurite Barlow, which is still the closest thing to a 10 I've got. So, what are my final thoughts on these? I know this video was brief compared to my usual half-hour-long rambles that I guarantee almost nobody sits through. I don't blame them, I wouldn't either. Um, but I still managed to make this video go on for over 12 minutes, so, you know, we're on track. But my opinions on these knives are an odd one. What do I think of them? Well, the quality is fair. For the price of about 30 Canadian, uh, 30 to 40 Canadian for the knife, depending on what size you select, it's not bad. But when I know that if I spent, say, 10, 20 more, I could get a second uh, Groman for the same price, or, heck, I could spend even less and get an Arthur Wright Barlow, I'd take these any day over a Curel, but they fill different roles. Now this is where you have to take everything with a grain of salt, because a collector can appreciate this. Heck, I'm a collector and I appreciate this. But to me, this is a user knife. It's roughly made, it, there are no special additions to it, there's no file work, there's no mirror polished blade, it's a basic rosewood handle. There are no embellishments. So I can appreciate this as a collector, but to me, this is a using knife, and that is, that's what, that's what I do. I use it. These, these are not using knives. No matter which way you look at them, even a letter opener, technically, yes, you could use them as letter openers, but in today's digital age, people don't get mail very frequently, and even when they do, using your knife at max once per day for one thing and then putting it away not to be used again I don't know if I'd really consider that a using knife. And for that reason, I have to say, these aren't knives you're buying to use. These are knives you're buying to add to your collection to say I have a traditional uh, Portuguese knife of a very unique style that's different from all my other knives, and it's something you take out and show off to friends and family members, perhaps as a conversation starter, or for fellow collectors as a means of comparing the knives you've got. That's fine. I, I definitely can understand that. And if anything, I know this sounds strange, but I'd recommend this one more. Now, I know the fit and finish is a bit better on it, but the reason I say this is because you already are, you know that you're buying these knives and they're ridiculous. 
I don't mean that in a bad way, I just mean that the proportions are just not right as an everyday carry. And because of that, if you're already going to buy a knife that is unorthodox and unconventional, I'd actually go with the more dainty one, because even though this knife would be absolutely terrible in any form of um, uh, violent encounter, again, I do not endorse the use of knives or anything um, to commit acts of violence. I want to put that on the record again. But even so, if you take this out, people will still get a little bit nervous. And this is the medium size. This isn't even the extra large one. The extra large one's like nine and a half inches. Oh, pardon me. I almost went through the whole video without measuring these. Overall length on this knife is almost seven and a half inches. Blade length is well over three inches. Definitely not UK legal. Handle is four inches. Knife here, the blade is two and three quarter inches. The handle is three and a quarter. And the overall length is just under six inches. So this is UK legal, but this one is not. But in the meantime, even though it's not made to be used in any uh, unconventional ways, and even if it would absolutely suck at it because of how weak the spring is, there's no safety mechanism here, it doesn't change the fact that when people see this, they're going to think of the movies where they, where they see the Godfather and the stiletto-style knives, and they're just going to... It's going to put a, an unease on some people, and I know... It's unnecessary. This is this is a harmless this is a harmless knife. It doesn't change what people will see in it. And because of that, and coupled with the fact that it's practically useless as an everyday carry, there is no reason at all to carry this with you. I mean, for those who do, more power to you, but I just can't see it. This knife, however, it's unorthodox and it's useless as an everyday carry. But if you're carrying it more as a conversation piece and less as an actual I'm using this for my EDC tasks. It's not that bad. It doesn't take up too much room. It won't be... It, it, I mean, it still might, but unlike this one, it's far less likely to scare anyone. And for the little tasks, it actually can work. So I guess the point, pun not intended, that I'm trying to make here, it's not... It's not to buy this knife as a carry knife, but rather as a collector's piece. But if you're going to buy it as a carry knife, and you're already carrying an unconventional knife to begin with, you might as well go the extra mile and make it a dainty little, practically, keychain knife. They do offer a keychain model, by the way. And I guess the, the best comparison I can use again is the case toothpick. I know there are some people who really like the large Texas toothpicks, um, Tobias Gibson in particular. Great channel again, go check them out. And I respect that decision, but I just can't see it. It's large enough that it will scare people, but the blade still, it's, it's thin enough that it might not be useful in the way that other knives with larger, more thick blades would. So the same thing applies here. If I were to carry a toothpick, I'd carry the smallest one because I already know this is a strange knife shape to be carrying, so I might as well be carrying the one that is a backup knife and not considering it my main carry. Same thing with this. I couldn't see carrying an extra large one. It's already unconventional, it might scare someone, and it's not even going to give you the best performance. So if you're going to carry one of these, it might as well be the least scary looking, the least bulky to carry, and just overall the, the lightest. And for that reason, I recommend both of these knives. I really do. This one, not so much. If you're a collector and you just want it for the sake of having a, an odd Portuguese stiletto knife to put in your collection, great. Absolutely. But this little one, I, I genuinely would recommend. It's a great little knife if you just want, you know, a fun, a fun thing to carry with you that you don't expect to use all that much, but you just know that you have it whenever something happens that you need a knife with an incredibly skinny little blade for those little tasks. So, again, that turned into a 20-minute ramble, as I predicted. But for those who stuck through it, thank you again for watching. 
I might actually release another video today. I have more free time than usual, and because of that, I might choose to, to do some binge uploading, if you will. But thank you for sitting through that, and I, I hope that this has done something for you. If you're interested in these knives, again, the only place I know where you can get them is fendrihan.ca or .com. Um, I definitely think that they are strange, and I would advise against buying them unless you are absolutely sure you want them as a collection piece, because I'd rather that you didn't buy them than buy them expecting to get a good everyday carry only to be disappointed. So, yeah, unconventional little knives. I like them for their style, but for their utility, eh, not the best. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. This has been the Curel Estiletto Portuguese Knife in two sizes and handle materials. And this is the Knife Raven, as always, signing off. Goodbye.